Hello, this is Alex from Cables.gl. I'd like to show you GLTF scene improvements from the last update. There have been tons of awesome new features that uh, you can read about in our blog here. And in this section called GLTF Skin and Bones, you'll see some new operators that have been updated and added. And uh, we'll try to go through them. And then um, I just want to show off this guy again because I am so psyched that now you can export unbaked animations out of Blender or whatever piece of software, um, even Mixamo or something like that, and then just import it into cables and play around with it and uh, get some cool information from this uh, 3D scene and then use it in your other operators and effects and things like that. So this model I took from Yara. Uh, I'm going to link it below in the description. Amazing, amazing artist. Um, love this little dude. And what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like in Blender. And you see that it's a really complicated looking animation curve here. And it's obviously all rigged up and there's a skeleton underneath um, this 3D model. And it's, yeah, really, really nice. And there's another example um, where uh, I've seen some, like I've never seen this before actually, uh, they are using deformers and like uh, little handlebars and stuff to drive the the skeleton inside Blender, and that's also a really cool way to animate your um, characters and then just get all these um, curves that you can then export into cables. And what we're gonna do is look at this guy again, and um, the scene is really really simple. It's just uh, some post processing over here to kind of add a little glow around them. And then we have materials. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this GLTF scene here. I'm going to make it a bit more visible for you. And I'm just taking out the different models or the different um, meshes out of the scene and then putting the materials for them. So for example, here's my rock and uh, here's my body and teeth for the little dragon. And what um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is this thing called GLTF skin, right? What is the skin? The skin is basically the mesh, but uh, the operator in cables also allows you to do something funky. And so what we're going to do is instead of using this common way of um, applying materials to a mesh in your GLTF scene, which we're breaking out a node from our hierarchy. I'm going to note that it's called body, right? I'm going to disconnect it, and then I'm going to add the skin. And here, for the um, in the parameters, you'll see that the node name has to be specified. So I'm going to put in body, and there is our guy. He's back. And uh, not the greatest example, I admit. But um, the coolest thing about this operator for me is that we can unhook the animation time from the rest of the scene. So you see here, um, this animation is bring, being driven by a timer here, and that is animating the entire scene. But if we start to use um, separate skin operators, we can actually control the animation, uh, you know, separately. So you can get kind of creative and, and maybe have different models that you will animate at different speeds or something like that. And you can kind of add some randomness or maybe uh, special effects to your scene. But anyway, we can switch it back. So that's the first thing I wanted to show. Um, another thing we can do with GLTF scene is we can connect this thing called the GLTF hierarchy. So we're sort of familiar with hierarchy because we have this button here, show structure, right? And then we have this, well, in this model, it's pretty huge, but we have all of our nodes and models and, uh, you know, meshes of our scene that we can break out um, into our project. But this GLTF hierarchy is going to go through all those nodes and kind of give us information of the location of those things. And what's what's the use of that? Well, first of all, we can 
do like a cool little visualization of our little skeleton um, underneath the skin. But one cool thing we can do is in this example, you see I have, um, in, in this example, it's actually a Mixamo animation that we've exported and, and uh, we have this zombie dude walking. And we're also using this GLTF hierarchy um, operator to then use a little setup I have here to um, populate an array and then I will grab one of those 3D points and then I'm going to apply a little pulsing point on top of it. And in this example, I'm also using that same information to drive my camera um, focus. Uh, and by focus, I don't mean like the blurriness or whatever, but the actual like point of the camera where it's focusing our attention. So what I have here is right now it's randomly on his hand. And if I change my field of view, you'll see that the camera is now following uh, his hand. And I got some smooth array here as well. So it's it's not too rigid and uh, it's, the camera is a bit uh, swaying in place. So what I can do is uh, click on this button and select another random point. So now we're focusing on the other hand. So this is actually kind of a silly example, but I hope um, it points out that you can have a, a scene created in Blender, for example, and then um, you don't really have to worry about the, the camera uh, exports and all that stuff. Um, you can just put in like even an empty uh, node somewhere. So for example, if I add um, an empty somewhere, right? I'm going to enable the view for it. So right now we have this yellow thing right here. And now if I um, hit G and then like move it around on the empty, not on my light, I can move out, move out this uh, empty somewhere else, right? And then I can use this position, for example, with this GLTF hierarchy to then point my camera at it. So we can create a scene in Blender and then position really quickly some meshes or uh, little empties um, to then use for navigation or to kind of focus our camera in our scene. So I hope that made sense. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And then what else do we have? We have GLTF node transform. And this one is um, kind of related to this GLTF hierarchy. However, uh, with GLTF hierarchy, we're just we have to put in the um, kind of the hierarchy name. So for example, if I look up my scene here, um, then I will see that my main root node is called armature.001, right? So if I put that into here, I'm going to get all the points that are kind of children um, of this root node. What I can use GLTF node transform for GLTF node transform this one right uh, I can actually use the name of it so I don't need to um, get them all and then right here I'm using like an array to chunk out this uh, single um, point out of out of my uh, hierarchy I can actually look up for example, I'll connect it here into this port called Next. And then, for example, you can use your 3D software or even this show structure to pick a point. For example, this dude 001, right? Um, I can copy paste that into my node name. And now it found this node. And now I'm getting an array of all the like data of this um, node in space. So. We don't necessarily have to do math and, and like chunking of arrays. We can actually just focus on a specific name and then get an array out of um, positions out of it and then use that for our project. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. I really want to show you actions. You can, you can hear in my voice that I'm like really excited about it. 
Um, but I need to prepare a little bit more for it. So anyway, catch you soon. Bye.